The boy who spoke to the birds. Hello, this is Natasha, and I'm here with a story from Russia about a boy who learned the language of the birds. As it turns out, his parents are not so nice, but he is an excellent son. Some time in Russia, there lived a merchant and his wife. Their only son was a kind-hearted boy called Ivan. This boy loved to listen to the song of a nightingale, which the family kept as a pet, or some might say as a prisoner inside a gilded cage. What is the meaning of her song? He often wondered. It is so lovely yet so sad. One day, his father heard Ivan asking this question out loud. And he agreed. Yes, I too long to understand her beautiful music. I would give half my wealth to the one who could teach me the language of the birds. His father's words made a big impression on Ivan. Not long after this, he was out for a walk in the woods when the weather became bitter. The rain was trying to turn into snow, but not quite succeeding and instead fell to earth in large, cold drops. Plop, plop, plop. It was most unpleasant. In the midst of this downpour, his keen ears caught a flustered sound up in the branches above his head. Little voices were crying out, Twee, 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 quite pitifully. He looked up and saw a nest where the heads of baby birds were bobbing up and down and crying in the cold rain. Ivan felt most sorry for the tiny creatures. Instead of hurrying home, he climbed up the tree and spread the flaps of his caftan over the nest to protect the fledglings from the rain. This caftan was a coat that his father had given him. It was embroidered with gold thread and not the sort of garment you would choose to go climbing trees in. He waited there some time until the mother bird returned. When she saw that the kind boy had saved her young ones from catching chills, she was filled with thanks. Young man, she said in good Russian, you have done me service. It so happens that I have magical powers and I can give you a fine reward. Say what you want and it shall be yours. The boy replied, Gracious bird, as it happens, there is one skill that I would dearly love to possess. Could you please teach me the language of the birds? Most certainly, replied the mother bird, and they arranged that he should visit her every day for a month and learn the words, the grammar and the tunes of the birds. Fortunately, the boy had a good ear for music, for birds communicate in song. He learned his lessons well, did his homework, and by the end of a month could understand everything that the birds told one another. Soon after this, Ivan sat at home on his usual couch, listening to the nightingale in his gilded cage. Now he understood the meaning of the beautiful bird's song and felt overwhelming sadness. His parents could not fail to notice his unhappy face and his mother asked, Dear Vanushka, that was the pet name she used for him, why are fat tears rolling down your cheeks? Are you suffering from a love that is not returned? No, mother. I am still too young for love. I have learnt the language of the birds. And now I understand the meaning of our pet nightingale's song. And that is why I am so sad. His father was intrigued by this and said, Well, Ivan, tell us the meaning of our beloved bird's song. When he was completely out, 
and snoring loudly. His parents carried him down to the shore and by the light of the moon they put him into a little boat and pushed him out to sea. They thought that he would drown and nobody would be the wiser. The currents brought the sleeping boy in his tiny boat alongside a ship. It was a starry night. At the mercy of the next big wave that would surely tip him into the water, he called to his fellow sailors for help, and one of them used a rope to climb down the side of the ship into Ivan's boat, where he smacked the boy around the chops until he awoke. The sailors then hauled both of them up to the safety of the deck. In this way, by the kindness of the ship's crew, Ivan's life was saved. The next morning, Ivan sat up on the deck, wrapped in a warm blanket. A flock of cranes flew overhead, and he tilted his head to catch what they were saying. This is what he heard. Quick, quick, fast as you can, head for the shore, a terrible storm is on its way. The boy tried to warn the sailors of what the birds had said and urged them to head for the port before the storm ripped the ship to pieces. But the sailors laughed, thinking that the poor lad must have caught too much sun while he was adrift at sea. But the storm did come, and it was every bit as fierce as Ivan had warned, and the ship took a mighty battering from the wind and the waves that did it much damage. A few days after the storm had passed, a flock of swans flew over the ship. Ivan heard what they were saying. Over there is a ship full of pirates who plan to do much mischief. Ivan reported what he had heard to the captain, who this time took him seriously. He ordered the crew to turn and head for a safe harbour. The swift pirate ship began to chase them. They raced towards the port and the boat carrying Ivan and the good sailors reached safety just in time. Now it so happened they had arrived at a town ruled over by a king who was extremely troubled by three crows. These noisy and noxious birds sat on the window sill of the king's bedroom and cawed day and night. Servants had tried to shoo them away with brooms and soldiers had tried to shoot them down with arrows, but all to no avail. Now the king offered a reward, his daughter's hand in marriage and half his kingdom to the one who could free him of this trouble. But he warned that any time wasters risked losing their heads. Ivan heard about this problem from a little bird and he understood that this was a golden opportunity. He made his way to the castle and offered his service in the matter of the three crows. The king's chamberlain showed him to the window where the bird sat and squawked. Ivan listened to what they were saying and told the Chamberlain. There are three crows, a father crow, a mother crow and a son crow. The mother and the father are seeking a divorce. They have come here to ask the king to judge who the son should follow, the mother or the father. Until they have received judgment in this matter, they will not leave. When the Chamberlain relayed this problem to the king, he ruled, the sun crow must stay with his mother. As soon as he made this decision, the father flew off on his own with an ill-tempered caw, and the mother and the son left in another direction. The king was delighted that the crows had finally cleared off from his window sill. The king was delighted that the crows had finally cleared off from his window sill. He gladly gave the hand in marriage of his youngest daughter to the boy who understood the secret language of birds. As Ivan's fortune went up, 
Little did he know that his father's star was falling. His wife had gone to a better world. And while he was grieving, he also lost his fortune when pirates attacked a boat carrying all his merchandise. The old man became a wandering beggar, dependent on the kindness and generosity of strangers. His travels brought him to the castle, where Prince Ivan was living happily with his princess. There the old man came before the young prince and begged for alms. His sight was failing him, and he did not recognise that his majesty was none other than his own son. Old man, what may I do for you? asked Prince Ivan. Be so kind as to let me stay here and work as one of your servants, said the old man. For once I was rich and now I have lost everything. My dear wife, my honest son, my fortune, and finally my pride. Dear father, said Ivan, you once doubted the song of a nightingale, but now you see that my translation was true. At first the old man was puzzled, and then stunned, and then frightened. He knelt before his son and begged for forgiveness. But wealth and good fortune had not changed Ivan. He was the same good-hearted boy that ever he was. He stepped down from his throne to embrace his father with the words, Papa, I wish for nothing more than to love, comfort and support you in your old age. And Prince Ivan was true to his word. And that is the traditional story from Russia of the boy who spoke to the birds. Adapted by Bertie and read for Storynoi.com by me, Natasha. You may like to know that we have loads of stories and myths from all over the world at Storynoi. So drop by and listen to some soon. And if you follow us on the podcast, please leave us a nice comment in iTunes or any of the podcast apps. For now, from me, Natasha, bye-bye.